Have you ever looked at a piece of charcoal and wondered, what actually is this stuff? It looks like a burnt piece of wood, right? But if you took a regular log and threw it into a fire, it would eventually turn into a pile of gray, useless ash. But charcoal, charcoal is different. It's lightweight, it sounds like glass when you clink it together, and it burns hotter and cleaner than any raw wood ever could. For thousands of years, this black, dusty lump was more valuable than gold. It ended the Stone Age, it fueled the Bronze Age, and without it, we wouldn't have steel, gunpowder, or even clean water filters. So how do we turn a heavy, wet tree branch into this pure energy source? And why did Henry Ford, yes, the car guy, change the way we barbecue forever? Welcome to Simple Things, Surprising Histories, Today, we are uncovering the secret life of charcoal. First, we need to clear up a common misconception. Charcoal isn't just burnt wood. If you burn wood in a campfire, the oxygen in the air attacks it. The wood turns into carbon dioxide, water vapor, and ash. But to make charcoal, you have to do something almost magical. You have to cook the wood without burning it. This process is called pyrolysis, which is just a fancy Greek way of saying separating by fire. See, a raw piece of wood is full of stuff that doesn't burn very well, mostly water and sap. In fact, nearly half the weight of fresh wood is just water. When you throw a log on a fire, a lot of the energy is wasted just boiling off that water, which creates that thick white smoke. Charcoal makers want to get rid of the water and the impurities, but keep the fuel, the pure carbon. To do that, they have to cheat the fire. Here is the step-by-step -step recipe that has been used for over 30,000 years. Step 1. The Stack in the traditional method, you stack logs tightly together in a cone shape. You want as much wood as possible with as little air gap as you can get. Step 2. The seal. You cover the entire stack with turf, wet clay, or soil. This is crucial. You are building an airtight oven. You leave just a tiny hole at the bottom to light a small fire and a small vent at the top for smoke to escape. Step 3. The cook. You light the fire. But because the mound is sealed, the fire can't grab enough oxygen to burn the logs to ash. Instead, the heat rises drastically, up to 400 or even 700 degrees Celsius. Inside this oven, the wood effectively sweats. First, the water steams off, then the tars and volatile gases, methane and hydrogen, are forced out of the wood structure. This is the dangerous part. If air leaks in now, boom, the whole thing explodes into flames. But if you keep it controlled, the wood transforms. The complex cell structure collapses, leaving behind a black carbon skeleton. After days of burning and cooling, you open the mound. The wood is now 75% lighter, but it holds nearly all of its original heat energy. You have created charcoal. Humans figured this out a long time ago. We're talking 30,000 years ago. But the real game changer was smelting. You can't melt copper or iron with a regular wood fire. It simply doesn't get hot enough. But charcoal, charcoal burns intensely hot. It was the fuel that allowed humanity to forge swords, tools, and armor. But let's jump forward to the 1920s and talk about your backyard barbecue. If you buy charcoal today, you usually buy briquettes, those perfectly shaped little pillows. You can thank Henry Ford for that. When Ford was mass-producing the Model T, his factories created mountains of scrap wood and sawdust. Ford hated waste, so he asked his friend Thomas Edison to design a factory that could turn that sawdust into charcoal powder, mix it with a glue-like binder, and press it into little lumps. They sold these briquettes through Ford's car dealerships, his picnic fuel. Later, a relative named E.G. Kingsford took over the operation. And that is why, to this day, the most famous charcoal brand in America is called Kingsford. So we burn it and we grill with it, but charcoal has a secret superpower hidden in its microstructure. Remember how the heat drove out all the water and gas? That process left the charcoal full of billions of tiny empty holes and tunnels. It's like a hard black sponge. 
This makes charcoal incredible at adsorption. That's adsorption with a D. It means things stick to it. If you look at activated charcoal, which is processed to have even more holes, just one gram of it has the surface area of a football field. That's why we use it in gas masks to trap poison. It's why it's inside your water filter to trap chlorine. Doctors even use it in emergency rooms to treat poisoning because the charcoal acts like a magnet, trapping toxins in the stomach before they get into the blood. From an artist's sketch pad to a life-saving medical tool, this simple black rock is one of the most versatile materials on Earth. So, the next time you pour a bag of charcoal onto the grill, take a second to look at it. You're not just holding fuel for your burgers, you're holding the remnant of a process that melted the Iron Age into existence, recycled the waste of the Industrial Revolution, and cleans the water you drink. Not bad for a piece of burnt wood. If you enjoyed this fiery history, give that like button a click, it really helps the channel, and subscribe to Simple Things for more surprising stories behind the everyday objects we take for granted. I'll see you in the next one.